everybody, it's Shelby from Sting Books. Okay, so I know it may be a little bit of an overhaul, but I wanted to get at least this one last video done today. It's getting a little late, I'm losing my light, but while my others were my intro video, I kind of wanted to start off with one video that was my, this is what I want to do, my update. So this is my week in review. Now, like I said, I read a lot of books, so this week I read eight books for like 2,673 pages, I believe. Um, and that's a pretty decent average week for me. Um, some of my books are a lot shorter, some are a lot longer. It kind of just depends on what I'm in the mood for or what I need to complete one of my challenges. Okay, so my first book I read this week was a book called Charmed and Dangerous, Ten Tales of Gay Paranormal Romance and Urban Fantasy. So I've been really looking forward to reading this book because it's a collection of short stories by some of my favorite MM writers, especially MM paranormal writers. I gave it 4.5 stars, which for me on a collection is actually pretty high. I don't generally like reading short story collections because I feel like you lose a lot in a short story. It takes a lot of work to make a short story work for me. Um, but these were also my favorite authors, so I figured they'd probably do a good job, which they did. The first book in there is called Dim Sum Asylum by Rise Ford, who is one of my all-time, all-time, all-time favorite authors, and I love her work. It's a great story that was a really unique kind of twist on San Francisco and paranormal elements. In there, you have a half-fae, half-human detective who gets partnered with a new partner, and they are chasing throughout the city trying to stop little um, statue genie thing running around that, like, is dusting love potion all over the place. But of course it's a romance so the two of them are also getting together. The second book in the series is Jin Hale's Swift and the Black Dog which was also very good. Back up, I gave Rise for Dim Sum Asylum a five star. <laughs> Jin Hale's Swift and the Black Dog um, was a four star read for me. The th reason this isn't a five star for me is if it had been a full-length novel and I'd gotten to get into this world and be introduced to these characters and had the whole of a book to really, really get into it, I would have loved it. It's great world building, which Jin Hale does brilliantly. Her worlds are super, super, super deep and really complicated. Their world is kind of like a feudal Japan style. They hated the system and they wanted to overthrow it with their magic. They managed as kids to be these assassins and completely destroy the old regime and this is the new world order. Now they've grown up, some of them are disappearing or getting killed, and the last main one left, the uh, regime is kind of put on this pedestal as the hero. He is trying to find out what happened to some of his compatriots. Um, of course he has magic and it's all kind of a dark magic because they used it as to be these assassins to save the world. The romance in this one is very minimal. It's really more about the story of like how the new girl up Roman has actually become corrupted and him trying to save the world again. Um, the third book is one I really, really wanted to read because I love KJ Charles and she's doing a spin-off of, of her Magpie Lord series, which is brilliant. And this was the introductory short into these kind of spin-off characters. It was called A Queer Trade. It's, I gave it four and a half stars because it's already in a world that I know and love. This guy, Crispin, who has been studying with his master for years, and what he doesn't know is his master is really a warlock and um, that the, magi the magic techniques that he's teaching him are actually forbidden. It's as his master has now died, some of his papers have gotten out into the world and Christmas trying to get them back to prevent like bad things from happening. It's an interracial series. Um, it's a black character in the 1700s and it's a gay series so it's like 17, 1800s, 1800s. I'm terrible with dates. So you have the interracial and you have the a time period where gay was not okay. So it's a real kind of keep it on the down low even amongst friends. But it's really great and the magic system is awesome and it's a great addition to the wider world of um, the Magpie Lord. The next book in the series was Nicole Kimberling's Magically Delicious. This was only a three and a half star read for me. It fell a little short because they didn't really get into the backstory of these two characters. And like, I like that in a short when it's an established couple. If you can give me a feel of their history and their relationship. 
because now I'm buying into them being a couple already and I don't have to go through the whole meet and greet, which takes a lot of time. So an established couple on a short usually works. Problem was I didn't get any other backstory. And so it's kind of campy and it didn't, it just didn't really work as a whole for me. There were some great little moments. There's really, really funny moments in it. The mystery was really easy to figure out. You kind of knew what was going on. He works for the police force, but he deals specifically with like food and drug magic and like how magic's put into food and whether it's twisted or wrong and the, not to give anything away, but he really should have figured out what was going on a lot quicker than he did. I do like Nicole Kimberly as an author, but this wasn't my favorite of her books. Jordan Castillo Price, Everyone's Afraid of Clowns. This was a four star read and this was just a four star read because it was super, super fun to be back in this world. The series that this story fits into is absolutely brilliant and I'm blanking on the series name right now, but the two main characters, Vic and Jacob, are police officers, but they're part of a psychop unit and that's the series names, Psychops, where one normal is paired with a psychic style detective and they work crimes together. Now Jacob and Vic are not partners, but they worked out of the same office and Vic is psychic, like level five, crazy psychic, he sees dead people. This book in the series falls way towards the end of the series and kind of everything that's gone on. And if you've read it, you know all of the details and it's brilliant and it's wonderful. But in this book, it's a fun little vignette looking into an old ghost from Vic's past when he was a kid and didn't really know what he was experiencing. And so they go to this old movie theater that's been turned into a haunted house and they're trying to find the spirit. Jordan L. Hawk, another of my favorite, favorite, favorite authors, wrote this book called The 13th Hex. It's another initial half, like half number, so it's at point five of a new series that she was starting. The main character in this book, Dominic, is a hex breaker. So he creates hexes for the police force, but he has no magical abilities himself. Well, there's a hex going wrong around the city the cops bring to him some of the hexes that have been drawn to see if he can figure out why they're going wrong. So of course he gets drawn into the investigation. Well, magic users in this world are paired with a familiar, who's a shape changer. Dominic meets Rook, who is a Rook, a um, raven shape changer. And Rook does not have a witch partner. He is a lone um, familiar. And together they start investigating this case. And of course, as the story goes along, you get lots of intrigue between the two of them and twists. It's brilliant. I gave it a five star read. I've already got the next book to read. I'm reading it this month because I'm super, super excited about it. It's fantastic. The next one was Charlie Cochet and the Soledadi Prince. <sighs> Charlie, you failed me. I love Charlie Cochet. Um, pronouncing her name wrong, I'm not really sure, but I love her books. I've read a lot of her books. This is not one of my favorites, and I think it fails because it's a short. And then they just, it was too much insta-love, which is a big pet peeve of mine. A guy who's just a normal guy in the real world working his um, job at a bakery when he gets attacked by these demons, and all of a sudden these tiger shifters show up and like save him and drag him off because he is the destined mate of their prince great in a feature full length book but it just got so rushed together and they don't want each other to start with and it just turns on a dime and so it didn't come together and work very well for me so it was a three star because the writing's still good it just doesn't work as a short. The next one was Andrea Speed's Josh of the Dam versus the Bathroom of Doom and if you've ever read any of Andrea Speed's Josh of the Dam books they're short they're meant to be short they're over the top humor and they're funny and I enjoy them. So it's a four star read. Basically Josh is a cashier at a late night quickie mart 7-eleven style main mart. Well at night the door to like essentially a hell mouth or whatever opens and all sorts of paranormal creatures can come in and they will buy things from him. So like zombies are obsessed with frozen burritos for whatever reason. So this is just one little night in the cookie mart of the next adventure that happens with the paranormals that came in. So it's cute, it's fun. There's moving bathtubs and toilets with teeth. It's humorous. And because it's so over the top, it works. 
Like it wouldn't work if it didn't go all the way like it does. The last book in this was Astro Tomorrow's The Trouble with Hexes. It's four and a half stars for me. I've read some Astro Tomorrow. I'm not super familiar with her work, but I really like this one because it worked as a short story. This is a case where these two characters have history behind them. They have a lot of history behind them. And while they're separated at the start of the book, them coming back together works because Astrid Damara does a brilliant job throughout the short of giving you their history, making you feel the love and the emotions and the, care, the caring that they had for each other. Tim is a PI. He is grounded in the here and now. He is very much just a, this is the real world and nothing else matters. Vincent, on the other hand, is a hexbreaker. And he and his aunt go around breaking hexes and Tim doesn't believe it's real. He thinks that it's a little crazy. So they break up. Well, now Tim has been cursed with a hex that's killing him. And so he, nobody can tell him why he's sick. And so he goes to Vincent as a last ditch thing. And Vincent's like, yeah, you have a hex on you. And now we need to save you. And of course it throws them back together and it's really beautifully written. So altogether, it's kind of a mixed book for me, but I gave it four and a half stars overall because it's got a lot of my favorite authors and I really enjoyed some of the books in it. So my next book on the list was Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. This was a three and a half star read for me. I didn't love it, in large part because my problems with YA came up a lot in this book. This is one of those books that's just been on my radar for a long time and people were always really recommending it to me. Um, it wasn't one that I was super excited about reading, but it got added to one of my challenge lists and um, came up as, all right, this book I need to read right now. I tend to like my way when it is fully fantasy in a totally different realm because in books that try and blend the modern world with fantasy elements or paranormal elements, too much of the modern whiny teenager comes into it and it drives me nuts. If you're gonna have a strong female lead, because most of these books center around a female protagonist, I want her to be a strong female protagonist. I want her to be kick-ass and fight for things. And while Rose does want that and she wants to be this strong partner, she's still too obsessed with boys and clothes and school and popularity and I want to strangle you. Not to say that she doesn't come through and that she doesn't fight and she doesn't step up, but she is still very much a teenager and I'm too far past that to really enjoy it. I get why a younger demographic really enjoys these books. So it's not bad. It's just I'm losing that appeal in my older age to really love the whiny teenageness. Of course, both boys are dark and brooding that the girls are all obsessed with. And, you know, Rose pulls some pretty shitty things in this one. But overall, it was an entertaining book, and it was not a hard read. It just fell off a little bit for me because of the nature of the genre. Um, and I didn't feel like it handled the teeny bop kind of culture as well as some other YA novels that I've read. I would be curious to see where the story goes because it kind of ends in an interesting place and finding out what happens next with these characters, but it's not one I'm going to run out to get the next book for. So I'm actually going to do this one as a kind of two-part review because I read two books in a series that I have been reading for a while this week, um, and that is Inversion Point and Phase Shift by Kelly Jensen and Jen Burke. I love this series. I've been obsessed with the series, and I'm so glad I finally finished it. Inversion Point is book four, and Phase Shift is book five. They were both fantastic books. Um, Inversion Point was brilliant. Inversion Point, full five stars. Phase Shift, I really is more of a 4.5 star read for me that I rounded up because of the series that it's in and that I love the series so much. The two books are in a series called Chaos Station, and they are a MM sci-fi romance. Your main character, Xander, has been in the military and he was part of an experimental program to end the war between humans and the Stin. The experimentation ultimately was going to kill him. And in the first book of the series, it's all about finding out what's going on. And he runs back into one of his boyhood companions, Felix, or Flick. They've been in love with each other forever. So it's another case where 
past history makes it so much more intense and so much more interesting to me. Xander hires Flick's crew, unbeknownst to him that Flick was on this crew, to go and save one of the other soldiers that were modified with him um, because the government wants to erase all traces of them ever existing. That's book one in Chaos Stations. But book four, not to get into too many spoilers, there's a new race of aliens being introduced and, and they're having to act as translators for this and of course all sorts of um, shenanigans ensue. And, you know, space battles. It's awesome. There's stuff blowing up and everybody's running for their lives. Really great. Book five, Phase Shift, is just as good though less action-y. And book five has kind of like a step down, but it, it was a step down in a right way because it's the conclusion of the series and it really gave a, a finish to Xander and Felix and their crew. At the same time, they totally could write more books in the series and I would not object if they would, if they did, but the authors have said this is the last book. I'm just really sad because I love these guys and I would love to see where they go next now that they're out of the whole like arc of what has been going on and all the part moving parts in this. Um, all of the past has been dealt with and handled. The final piece was taken care of in book five and really tied everything up. There's no loose dangling threads, which is great and makes me very happy. But the way they set the new beginning, you could do a totally new series of what they go into now and I would be so happy because I love these characters. I also read this week Jim Butcher's Grave Peril which is book three in the Dresden Files, and I'm loving the series. It's um, a five-star read for me. It was really fantastic, and it's action-packed from the beginning. It's almost a four-and-a-half-star read, in part because there were characters introduced in this book that we've never heard of before, and they were introduced in a way that made it felt like I missed a book, that I should know who this person is. And because of that, it it was a little tough to get into, even though the action starts page one, you are in it and flying and there are ghosts reappearing and they're uh, malevolent and they are trying to hurt everybody. This one got crazy. And there's vampires involved and the fae and they're in and out of the never ever and they're just running around bonkers from minute one. And Bob's back and I love Bob because Bob is cool. And if you don't know who Bob is, read the book because he's awesome. Harry, Dresden, our lovely witch, Warlock, is trying to stop all this from happening, and he's got his Knight Templar style dude along with him, Mitch. I think it's Mitch. I'm really terrible at character names. We've never met Mitch before, and all of a sudden he has, like, been on multiple cases with, with Harry, and they've done stuff in the past together, but we as an audience didn't know him. So it does get explained somewhat in the book, to the point that I didn't hate it. So it's a great continuation of the series and I am really looking forward to reading more books in the series. It's been out for a really long time so I know I can just keep plugging away at them. Next I read A Hunted Man, another MM romance that I'd been looking forward to. I read the first book in this series. This is book two in the Halfway House series. I read book one for um, the author of the month challenge for the MM romance group. Never heard of the author before, just randomly it was the author picked, and so I read the first book in the series and really loved it. This is a case where these men are getting out of prison and trying to reestablish themselves in the real, you know, modern world. The first book is about this establishment of how the playhouse, and I won't get into too many details. The characters in each book are different. They just all originate at this new halfway house. So in A Hunted Man, you have Cameron getting out of jail after 10 years. Turns out he was essentially wrongfully imprisoned. He did kill a guy, but it was really in self-defense, but due to circumstances that are the cause of everything that happens in the book, um, he was accused of and convicted of a lot more than that. So he's been in jail for 10 years, and he's finally been paroled. He is being put up at Halfway House and uh, has to reinstitute himself into, into society. He's supposed to get a job and everything. And so he starts working in a bakery in, like, the sandwich shop that's just down the street from the district attorney's office. And one of the attorneys in the office comes in there all the time, and it's like immediate connection between the two guys. And of course, at first, he doesn't know about Cam's past. As everything comes to light, there's more going on, and it's a whole, like, corrupt system story. And it's really good, and the romance is great, because there's some sexy times going on. And I really felt like their connection was brilliant. So good. 
can't wait to read the next book in the series because there's two more books in the series and I've enjoyed every book so far. So that one's going on the TBR to be read here hopefully relatively soon. My next book was The White Road, which is book five in the Night Runner series by Lynn Flewellen. This is a series I've been reading off and on for the last like year and a half, two years. Because I never seem to get to them quickly, even though I want to because the series is really good. The White Road is a nice transition from the last book in the series. The last book in the series is super dark. This one is kind of like, ha, oh, breath of fresh air. I gave it five stars overall. This is an MM um, series. It's an MM fantasy series. The romance in this is totally on the one flame side. There is no on, on uh, page sex. So this is kind of a transition book. It picks up right where the last one ended and moves Sarah Gell and Alec along in their own kind of path of, of coming to grips with where they're at in their lives and what they want. This book kind of gives them the time to reestablish who they are with their friends, still while trying to find out information that will benefit them uh, moving forward, and takes them on a journey that kind of closes out a, a path and opens up where they're going next, that takes them back to Rimini um, and back into the world of the Night Runners and um, the job that they've been doing for years. This series is a fantastic fantasy series. It's great high fantasy. Um, or what I call epic fantasy. Much bigger world, the war between um, the Scotlands and the Planimarans is picking up, and we know that the next book is going to be a lot of court intrigue. So I'm really excited to continue and read book six. It's on my list to read this month, which is rare for me to have my epic fantasies like back-to-back -back planned, but I definitely want to get to that this month. So I'll be really looking forward to seeing where it goes. And I'm trying to finish the series out because it's done and I don't have to wait for books because I've been reading it for so long and I keep forgetting pieces because I take so long between books. But I'm really excited about this one and it's definitely great high fantasy. So the last book I read this week um, was Elemental Pleasures by, or sorry, Elemental Pleasure by Marie Carr and Lila Dubois. So Marie Carr is the author of the month in the Romance Readers Reading Challenges group that I'm a part of, the RRRC. In this case, I've read Marie Carr in the past. She's definitely an erotica novelist, and I've enjoyed some of her books in the past. So I was looking forward to reading this book. I've had it on my TBR for a really long time, and it was one that I figured I should get around to reading. I owned it already. It's kind of just been sitting there on my Kindle. Time to check it out. I'd never read any Lila Dubois, but I was willing to check this one out. I was not a huge fan of this book, and I wanted to. It is also um, a menage book. Um, basically, the book is set up as a kind of Mason Society group um, called the Trinity Masters, and when you join the group, you give up all choices to who you're going to marry later in life. So, our characters our three main characters get called in to the, see the Grand Master because he's going to tell them and introduce them to each other as they are going to be this triad. And the thing is, you have, no, you have no debate, no question, you are going to marry these people and you're going to be a triad, but you can't let the world know that you're a triad because that would be weird. So Carly is a game designer and creator. She owns her own company. They're this super popular game that's on the cutting edge of baking virtual reality and intelligent gaming where the game adapts to you as a user. And the two guys are Lance, who is a mathematician working for DARPA and was a Marine, but he's, he's a soldier. Like, he doesn't deal with emotional stuff well. And then Preston, who is a chemist and works in nanotechnology. And so the Trinity Masters basically pick three people that they think complementary interests will create new, cool, unique things moving in problem with this is, it, this book is, the three people get thrown together. They've never met each other before. It's not even insta-love, it's insta-lust times ten, to the point that they shut out all talking and they gesture, it's all about the sex, which I hate. I'm fine with erotica, but make it be more than just about the sex. This, 
there's so many misunderstandings and problems between them when they first meet because they don't talk about anything and it's just like, oh my god, all I want to do is pull their clothes off. And I got really annoyed. On top of that, if you're going to do a menage and it's going to be two guys and a girl or two girls and a guy, I don't care. All three people need to be involved in it with each other. Not just two focused on one. The guys have no interest in each other. They only care about the girl. And that gets to be very unbalanced to me. If you're going to do a menage, I feel like everybody needs to be invested equally with everybody. So this falls down for me a lot. Um, there's no, there's a little bit of a plot. <laughs> and it's kind of thrown in there and an espionage thingy. And it's there. It's not terrible. And it does elevate the book a little bit because it does take it somewhere. But all the problems with the couple and the way that they came together and the three of them just didn't work. So anyway, that is my week in review. Um, I, like I said, read eight books this, this week. I have a whole bunch planned for next week and it's going to kind of come down to what challenges lead me to what. I never know what I'm going to read next until I get there. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know any comments if you've read some of these books, if you disagree with me and you think I'm an idiot totally cool. I want to know what you think. Or if you love some of these books and completely agree and think they're fantastic, um, check them out. Check out the comments below and leave me a little love. Anyway, have a great day. Bye!